Here I have an electroscope. An electroscope is something that can be used to tell whether an object carries a net charge or not. For this electroscope, we have a metal plate with a metal screw connected down there to this uh, thing, bent thing over here. And uh, on there, there is a metal foil. Oh, I just knocked it off. This metal foil is uh, riding on a needle. So I can put it on my hand and then it can swing around. Okay, so and then let me put this back right here. Okay, so that's the foil in there. So all these are connected. And notice that this is an insulator here and an insulator over there. So this cylindrical metal shell here is not electrically connected to the rest of the electroscope. The essential part of the electroscope is the plate and the part that's inside. This metal shell is used for what we call Faraday's cage, which we'll talk about later. Let's see, I'm going to ground this rod and then bring this neutral rod close to the electroscope. Nothing happens, right? Okay. Now let's see what happens if I rub this rod to make it carry a net charge and then bring it close. See what happens? The foil opens up. When a negatively charged rod is brought close to the plate, some of the free electrons get repelled to the far end of the electroscope, leaving positive charges up here. Since we have negative charges on the two sides, they repel each other and the foil opens up. Now, what if the rod is positively charged? What will happen? Now, let's rub this uh, glass rod with silk and bring this uh, positively charged rod close to the plate. It opens up exactly the same way as before with the negatively charged rod, right? If the rod is positively charged, it attracts negatively charged electrons. Some free electrons move onto the plate, leaving positive charges on the far end. Since we have positive charges on the two sides, they repel each other and the foil opens up. The same way for a negatively charged rod. So used this way, an electroscope can only tell us whether the rod you bring close carries a net charge or not. It cannot tell whether the net charges are positive or negative. If we need to use an electroscope to tell whether something carries a positive or a negative charge, we will have to employ something that carries a known charge. I can also make the electroscope carry a net charge by rubbing this negatively charged rod on the plate. This is called a charge by conduction. Some of the excessive electrons flow to the plate, making this part of the electroscope negative. Because everything here is negative, the foil and the vertical metal thing repel each other. So the foil stays open, even after I remove the rod. And if I bring the rod back, the foil opens up even more. Right? If I rub this again, the stronger charge it will make it open more obvious, right? Can you explain that? The negatively charged rod repels negative charges. So more negative charges move down and therefore the foil and the vertical plate repel each other with stronger force than before. Now, how do I remove the excessive electrons on this electroscope and return it to neutral? Right, by grounding it. I can also make an object carry a charge by induction. Just 
bring the rod close to the plate without touching it. While holding the rod there, I can ground the plate so the angle closes now and then remove the grounding. Now I remove the rod. See, the angle opens back. And if I bring the rod back, the angle closes again, take it away, open and close, and then open and then close. Let's see. At first, the rod induces a charge separation in the electroscope, so the foil opens. When I added the grounding, it removes excessive charges. But only the excessive charges on the far end of the charged rod gets removed. Because the negatively charged rod attracts the positive charges, those charges are not grounded away. Since there's no more net charges down here, the foil and vertical plate no longer repel each other and the foil closes. I then remove the grounding while keeping the rod in place. Then I can remove the rod and the positive neck charges on the electroscope spreads out. The foil and the vertical metal plate repel each other and the foil opens up. So when we use a charged rod to make a neutral object carry a charge by induction, the object does not touch the charged rod at all. See, the rod never touched the electroscope. And the object ends with a charge that is opposite to the kind of charge on the charged rod. After the charged rod is removed, when I bring the charged rod back, it attracts the positive charges so they move onto the plate, leaving no charges down here. That's why the foil closes again. Of course, since positive charges cannot really flow inside the metal, what really happens is that the rod repels more electrons from the plate to the far end to neutralize these charges. And since now the plate has even fewer electrons than before, it has more positive charges compared to that. Therefore, it is equivalent to having more positive charges moving onto the plate. This also tells us how we can use an electroscope and a known charge to tell whether a rod carries a net positive charge or a negative charge. For example, if the electroscope already carries a positive charge, when we bring in close a negatively charged rod, the opening angle will get smaller. However, when we bring close a positively charged rod, because the positive charges get repelled to the low end, more charges are here to repel each other, so the angle opens wider. So if the rod we bring close carries an opposite charge to the charge that's already on the electroscope, the angle would decrease. If it's the same kind of charge, the angle would increase.